This is the MGTOW Infinium here with another Infinium out and about. This Infinium out and about is entitled a PSA about Christian chameleons. Now my MGTOW brothers, here I am again uh, in an area behind, uh, well next to my workplace, this little forest area here and a uh, little bit of a lake here which they need to kind of clean that out but uh, uh, this is again next door to where I work but my MGTOW brothers I really want to talk to you um, about Christian chameleons women who are chameleons and who hide behind the veil of Christianity now, a few days ago, Tail the Fiend uh, did a uh, video on a uh, Christian chameleon, um, and it was an excellent uh, analysis video of what she was saying, um, the uh, types of rhetoric that she was pushing forward, all the uh, blah, 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 this and that and whatever. And I recommend that you do go over to his channel and check out uh, those uh, videos because uh, she, uh, he only, not only uh, did um, he do an, anal boy, an analysis video of it, uh, she did a rebuttal to his uh, first analysis, and uh, he did an analysis of that one as well. And I just want to comment on that video and what this woman was saying. Uh, again... I will state outright that the a, a woman who puts herself forth as a Christian and who is a chameleon is uh, a very dangerous type of uh, deal, I would say. And uh, this is because uh, they use the veil of Christianity uh, as a hoodwinking tool, as a tool to beat upon you, uh, everything uh, to manipulate you, my brothers. And you, my brothers, you need to understand this when a woman comes to you, when she's trying to get into your uh, life, get into your, uh, your resources, your, your, your whatever you have, uh, your uh, freedom my brothers, when she comes to you with, I am a Christian, I walk the way of Christ, uh, you need to run away, my brothers. This is because immediately you should understand that these women know little or nothing about Christianity. Uh, they only know the certain phrases, uh, the certain things that have been said over the years, uh, which uh, uh, pastors have said, which they've heard somewhere. Or maybe they kind of uh, glanced at the Bible and picked up a scripture here and there. And um, these things are taken out of context uh, with uh, the reality of Christianity. Uh, the first thing that you, my brothers, must understand that when a man and a woman get together in terms of marriage, in terms of uh, being with each other, in terms of a marital type of situation, the woman must submit to the man. And uh, furthermore, there is a balance uh, to that that the Bible spells out which uh, the man's body belongs to the woman and the woman's body belongs to the man. So there is a uh, balance there which states that the man cannot run around as well uh, the woman cannot run around. And see, because of the current state of feminism, women will not submit to men under no circumstance. They see that uh, statement that, that's in the Bible that uh, women, must, women must submit to their husbands 
They see it as a detriment to their lives. They see it as a controlling factor. And indeed, it, it has been, in some cases, been used in that manner. But in a proper marriage, in the way that the Bible spells it out, submission by the woman to her husband is a beautiful thing because it allows the love between the man and the woman to prosper. And I would also say that uh, even though the Bible spells out the way marriages should be, uh, it also advocates against marriage. So I would uh, lay that out as well. But getting back to what this woman was saying, she was saying all types of things that that really um, that she's a feminist um, and feminism itself is contrary, contradictory to what the Bible says. And indeed, you know, when these women say that the MGTOW philosophy is of the devil and you can't, uh, we, we men can't do that, it is in fact, uh, the opposite of that, the MGTOW philosophy, as I look at it, as I read in the Bible, and as other brothers have seen it, is compatible with being a Christian. And that is because, again, the Bible does not advocate uh, marriage. It, it advocates against it. And also, it uh, spells out that, uh, that men who do get married, they're, uh, they're distracted. They're distracted from the spreading of the gospel, and they're distracted because they have to take care of their wives. So even then, even those thousands of years ago, the Bible spelled it out that you, as a man, when you get married, your obligations to that marriage will become a distraction and will become such that it overwhelms your life at certain points. And the Bible even spells that out, that, that there will be difficulties, there will be things that go on in marriage. That And again, that that is why, it first of all, it advises against marriage, but uh, it also gives a construct for marriage should, one, should a man decide to marry. And again, these feminists, will not submit to that construct because it requires submission to a man. But moving on to another thing that she said, she said that uh, her, her, uh, flight just got on me, but her um, feminis femininity uh, was because she was a feminist. And that is just my involvement because she's mixing the ideology of feminism with a descriptor which is femininity. And so that is, that is the same thing um, uh, if we men say that masculinity is basically mixed up with the MGTOW philosophy. Uh, the philosophy is a separate thing from masculinity. Masculinity, again, is a descriptor of what we are and who we are as men, just as femininity is a descriptor of who women are and what they are as women. So she said that. And then, uh, of course, there was the uh, you, we as men cannot have an opinion about women because we don't know what we're talking about. We don't know what we're saying. Uh, we don't have any experience, blah, blah, blah. But again, it is the same old rhetoric and same old BS, I would say, that says that men have no right whatsoever to have an opinion about women, to have a say-so about the problems between men and women. We have no rights. We have no say-so. We have no uh, um, understanding. But yet again, we as men have been pointing out for years now the problems, the issues, 
all the things that are going on. And uh, it is a woman like this one that she says that she, she can't find a man, that this is going on, I, I haven't dated in years, and blah, blah, blah. But she cannot look in the mirror and say, maybe what men are saying is right, and maybe I as a woman need to do something about it. Maybe I have to change my ways. Maybe I have to say, yes, I have been wrong. And yes, definitively. Not yes, if. Yes, definitively. I have been wrong. And I have done wrong. And I now need to correct it. But these, again, these feminists, these womanists, or whatever you want to call them, they will not do that. And so, again, when these women say that they are Christian... My brothers, the best thing to do is to run away. Again, I have been through horror stories with uh, women uh, who said they were Christians. I once married a, uh, a, a horror story. You can go back in some of my into some of my videos and check that out. But I know of horror stories personally, and I know of... Uh, other horror stories that I've seen, all types of things that have happened to men because the woman, they were trying to marry or trying to have a relationship with, said they were Christian, but yet they were hiding behind a veil of Christianity. They were hiding behind a veil of uh, uh, Christianity, which is something that no one, should do no one should do because if you are a Christian a true Christian the faith of Christianity is one of truth and if you're hiding behind a veil of Christianity and you are uh, portraying yourself as a Christian when you are not when you're uh, running around, when you're doing what you want to do, and you're um, uh, using things like hypergamy on a man, and uh, you're not being faithful to a, a man that you're in relationship with, who you're married to, you are deemed as a liar. You're deemed as a, uh, a person who was unfaithful, and there can be action against you according to what the Bible says. It says that these things can be done, that there are things in the Bible that these people don't even talk about, that they don't even spell out, which have to do with uh, adultery, all types of things that are going on. So again, my brothers, look at what these women are saying and consider again what they're saying. Because what they're saying is not the truth. And I'll just go on and say even further, these women who are running around uh, saying I'm a Christian, saying I, 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 I walk the faith of Christ, I walk the walk of Christ, I pray daily, blah, blah, blah. Again, I have come to the place, my brothers, where I sincerely doubt that these women even have confessed Christ. That's, that's how bad it is. Um, and if, uh, for instance, if you look in the uh, book of Hebrews, and it, it spells out what the uh, Christians of old went through, the, the suffering, uh, the types of things that they uh, went through. Uh, they, it says that they went around in rags. They went around uh, the, uh, hungry, starving. And they, they never gave up on the faith of Christ. They never uh, were persuaded to walk away from Christ. They hung on to their faith. Now, if that type of thing happened to these women who are uh, doing these types of things, they would be the first to run. They would be the first to uh, 
jump ship, to, to bail out of that burning plane. So what I'm getting at is when they take those vows and it says for better or for worse, they, they overlook that. They overlook for worse. They overlook any type of like a job, like the husband lost his job or, or you, the husband gets a sickness or this and that or what happens to him. Uh, they are looking for resources and once that resource is gone, they are gone. And so again, my brothers, be careful when these women come to you and they say they are Christians because in likelihood they are not. Now, my brothers, I just want to say happy Father's Day to those MGTOW men who are fathers. And I would just say to you, my brothers, I, I haven't been a father myself, but I want to extend a hand of um, uh, gratitude to you, my brothers, because I know that many of you have been struggling. You've probably been struggling with family court. You've probably been struggling with a woman who has tried to keep your kids away from you, tried to uh, uh, just brainwash your kids, all types of things. But my brothers, I would say to you today that nevertheless, be encouraged. Be encouraged in who you are as a man. Be encouraged that you are a man. And know that if you have done everything in your power, to do right as a parent, then, my brothers, again, don't be despondent about the criticism, about the, the, the things that uh, have been forced upon you, all these things. Because in the end, in the end, like RPM has said, the lights are going to go out on these women. And what is going to happen is that these women will be faced with the challenge of finding men who will help them, but only to find out that men largely and for the most part have turned their backs on them for good and have said, frankly, my dears, we don't give a damn. This is the Midtown Infinium, and this has been an Infinium out and about. My Midtown brothers, as always, stay safe, stay strong, stay on the Midtown path, and remember, Midtown is the liberation of men's minds. Midtown cannot and will not be stopped.